Hi everyone, welcome to this video. Uh, today we're talking about inputs in Python 2 and a little bit about alignment and how we can create a personal budget using Python 2. Now you can see on my screen I'm here on Trinket.io. It's an option, it's something that you can use for an IDE. There's also IDLE, um, there's uh, REPL, which are different options, and I'll put some options on the screen so that you can see what potentially you could use instead of Trinket. I know there are some issues with it, but it's what I'll use today. Um, you can also see on the right in the output what we're going for. At the end of this video, we should have an idea of how to make a quick personal budget using inputs using Python 2. So hopefully this is helpful. Hopefully this video helps you understand some of the concepts. Um, I haven't put the exact code in for this budget that I have in the output because the goal of this video is to go through some of the specifics and how technically we'll make this work, um, but I won't put all of the exact code in there. So you will have to do some of the work, um, but we'll hopefully give you all the tools that you'll need to make that happen. So let's go ahead and get started. As you can see here in the output, we've got enter item one and enter item one monthly amount. Now the point of this video is going to be us creating a personal budget using inputs in Python. So when you create each budget item, you'll be doing that line by line in the output section. So that means in our actual code, we'll have to write something that looks a little bit more like item one is equal to the input from the user of enter item one. So let's talk about this sentence really quick. Item one is our variable, and that's what we're going to use later to hold that food, which I have in the output. Um, the way to get that is using this input function, and the function takes in a string. Now that string is what's going to be displayed to the user. So if I put in enter item one, then it will show enter item one, and it will pause there and wait for the user to input whatever they would like. In this case, I inputted food, so food is being saved as item one. Now if we continue, we need another input so that we can take in the monthly amount, the monthly cost of that item. So if we want the monthly amount, let's say monthly one is equal to, now if I was just to say input here, input enter item one, monthly amount, if I was to just do that and let it go, it would input as a string. Now using that string would be a little bit tricky and I would not be able to calculate the yearly amount with that string very easily. So what I do instead is I will say float of that input. Now it takes the input as a string, but it converts it into a float, which is what we're gonna be able to use as a number. You can also see that I added for food is 100.42. Now, it's important to use a float so that we can take that 0.42 and not lose it. If we were to use an integer, we would not be able to see the decimal values. And since we're working with money, it's important to keep those decimal values. Now, another part of our personal budget here that we wanna show is the yearly cost. Now, that yearly cost at the bottom is calculated, and it's important that we calculate it and we don't just hard code a specific string or a specific float because the best way to program is to let the computer do a lot of the work for you. So specifically that multiplication, let's have the computer do that for us. So if I say yearly one is equal to monthly one times 12. Now yearly is just going to take that calculation and it's also going to be a float since monthly is a float, which as we remember is a number with a decimal and it's going to multiply by 12, it keeps the decimal, so yearly one is also a float and it's a money style number. So now that we have that, we can print that out. We can print it as whatever we want. We can just print those strings directly or we can use that input as a variable in something else. Now I'm actually gonna clear this really quick, uh, this first part, because I wanna talk about the print statements. Now you can see in the right, and very soon we're gonna clear this out so that we can use some of the other code and, and put everything together. But you can see the quick chart that I have, item, monthly, yearly, and then each of the line items, all of the monthly costs and all the yearly costs. And it's actually aligned pretty well. So let's talk about alignment for a second. So if I wanted to do this again, let's say, let's, let's just talk about item, monthly, yearly. Now I'm gonna clear this uh, output here, so hopefully you remember what it looks like. But if I was to say item monthly yearly like that, it doesn't look all that great. Maybe if I wanna space everything out, I'll use a bunch of spaces and that helps. But if I wanna put something else below it, let's say I wanted to put the food option 
and it's a hundred dollars and then twelve hundred dollars a year it doesn't line up so if you're trying to use spaces you're trying to make everything line up it's not quite right that's going to take a really long time and it's also not very repeatable so if we have a bunch of lines it's going to take us a very long time to make sure everything lines up so using spaces is not recommended so let's talk about another option if we want to use variables we can use this formatting notation so instead of item we just add this little tag and it's the percent sign and then after the percent sign you want to put the amount of space that you need for that word so how wide we want each column to be so if we want this first column to be 10 we put in 10 and then an s now that s means that the, the uh, variable that we're using is a string now it's very important if we were to use an f it would be a float if you remember we were talking about our money will be in floats and the S is for string. So I'm going to do that three times. And the three variables I'm going to use, whoops, the three variables I'm going to use are item, monthly, yearly. Now when we run that, you see there's a little bit of a, a trinket bug there. But essentially, item, monthly, and yearly are spaced out by 10 each. Now the important thing to note is that you've got an alignment to think about. You can do negative here. Now a negative on each of them is going to move the alignment over just a little bit, whether it's to the left or to the right. And then Trinket has a few issues here and I can I can add a new tab and that'll fix that. But you can see the food hasn't been moved, but this top one is. So if we copy that, we do the same thing with the food. And I'm just going to use strings here so we can understand how this works. But if we want those things to line up, I'm actually going to create a new tab. If you see this issue in Trinket, if you're using Trinket, um, you can try opening up a new tab and pasting that same thing. So you don't have to worry about uh, things lining up in a weird way. Apparently it's giving me that problem again, so we're going to have to refresh this tab. and keep going, try that again. Okay, so now it lines up. Uh, it looks like there are a couple issues with Trinket. So the more times we do this in the formatting, it's going to keep pushing it off to the right a little bit. That is a bug in Trinket, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. But when we do our final run, we'll make sure to refresh the tab, and then we'll, we'll be able to do that without having too many issues. So let's talk about how this works. We mentioned the notation here, so you need the percent sign. The next thing you need is the width of your column and then a letter. Now that letter represents whether it's going to be a string or a float or a decimal. And then if you chose string, make sure in your variable collection over here that you use only strings to represent it. Now if I wanted to use floats, I could do F on both sides here. Now let's look at something interesting. And I know I had some questions about this. Um, 10 point, you can do however many you want here. Um, then when we run that, and again, don't pay attention to the, the weird issue with Trinket, we'll fix that later, but it does not round these. Now, when we're talking about money, obviously we want these to be rounded. So 10.5678900 is not gonna be very helpful to us if we're talking about cash, but maybe that's what our number turns out to be. So in order to round that, you can add a 0.2 right before the number in your formatting notation here and that will round those numbers to the second decimal. If you wanted to do to the fourth decimal, you could do that as well. Now we don't want to do this because we're talking about money, so we'll keep that as a two, but keep that in mind, that's what you're doing to make it round. Now these numbers can also be calculated. Now let's see if we can remember from before, if we want our input, And then I'll create a second amount. And we can use those instead of these variables right here. So let's say amount one, amount two. So it'll enter the amount and also let's remember to make that a float so that we don't just take it in as a string. And then amount two will be calculated using amount one multiplied by 12. So let's see what we get here. Okay, so the first thing it asks us to do is enter the amount. Now you have to click on this side 
and you can start entering what you want to enter. So let's say 10 point five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's try that again. Now we got item, monthly, yearly, food, 10.57. Notice that it's rounded to the nearest uh, two decimal places. And then it multiplied 126.81 for us. Now, if we're making a personal budget, we know this is going to be money. So we want to start adding a, a couple of things to this. Let's add some dollar signs. Now you can notice that I'm adding those right here, right before the formatting notation, because everything percent sign to that F is going to be replaced by amount one. It's going to be replaced by that variable and it's going to put it right there. So if I have a dollar sign right before it, it will add a dollar sign to the 10.57. And I did the same thing to this second amount. So let's try running that again. So if I enter the amount as 88.5, again, you have to click on this first, sorry, 88.5, hit enter, item monthly yearly. Now it's got a dollar sign on the 88.5 and a dollar sign on the 1062.00. Let's say I wanted to add a quick uh, line here. Maybe I want a gap between between the enter amount and the item monthly yearly, and I want a quick header between item monthly yearly and each of my line items in my budget. So I know that I have negative 10, negative 10, negative 10, so the entire thing is 30 wide. So I'm gonna print out 30 equal signs to create sort of a, a gap between item monthly yearly, the titles, and each of the line items themselves. So in that print statement, you can print out a multiplication of, so essentially this times 30 is saying, I would like to print 30 of these equal signs. Now I don't wanna type 30 of those and I don't wanna to have to worry about counting to make sure I have exactly 30. So I just say print one times 30 and then we'll do it 30 times. So if I enter my amount as 26.78, now it prints this out. Now remember, we have to worry about that trinket issue, which is moving everything over. The way we're going to fix that is to go in and create a new tab before we do our final submission. So I think this should give you everything that you need to create your personal budget. Now that we've reloaded, it should run just a little bit smoother. So far, amount is 78.99. Item monthly yearly, we've got our 30 equal signs, which is dividing it up. Then we have each of our items food, our dollar amount for the actual monthly cost, and then our yearly cost. So hopefully that's everything that you guys need to build a personal budget quickly in an online IDE using Python 2. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to let me know in a comment, either to this video or message directly to me. And I'll hopefully be able to help you out with that. But best of luck, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks.